Upstairs in what they call the, the psych ward, I had this feeling that we needed to be in the kitchen. Steve and I were up there with another investigator and I specifically kept saying we need to go down to the kitchen. Finally they listened and we went down to the kitchen. I kept saying there was something in there or someone in there. Steve thought that I was talking about the other investigators that was out in the hallway, but I kept telling him no, that's not what it was. Finally listening to me, when he looked up, he saw a black shadow go into this room which, would, which looked like a pantry, almost where you would keep canned foods or whatever. There was only one door, no windows, no way in and no way out, so there was no way that there was light that would make this shadow. A little later we started doing uh, setting up the equipment, we're setting up the video and audio recorders, uh, and Jen and I had gone around and replacing the audio, audio recorders. Uh, each time we put one, you know, we made sure it was on, we made sure it was recording. Uh, so a little later in the night when we're doing our investigation, we find, we look at the audio recorder in the kitchen and it was off. Uh, so we didn't think much of it at first, we thought, well, maybe batteries died or it, it was full and turned off or whatnot. So it, it turned right back on and started recording. There was no problem with batteries, anything like that. Uh, so it, it was very suspicious because that was, you know, we think something turned that off. Um, and none of the others had ever turned off, and they haven't in any other uh, investigations. Also in that same room in the kitchen, uh, there's a, a big industrial range hood, uh, and there was, it sounded like air was just flowing through that. The funny thing about investigating at the hospital is there's no electricity. So the, the range hood was not on, it wasn't windy outside, you know, there, there's no explanation for, for air blowing through there, and there actually wasn't even any air blowing through there. Uh, reaching up, you know, to put your hand there, you didn't feel anything, but it sounded like air flowing. Uh, so there was some activity there that definitely made me made me think that you know those two incidences may be related. The kitchen was a very strange place. We would set up our recorders in there and leave, and some of the EVPs that we got from that room were extremely disturbing. In the chapel room, which had been turned into an office, I was in there with some other investigators and an EVP session was going on. I had a K2 meter in my hand and the K2 started going off and the lights started blinking left all, a lot. Um, this went on for about a minute and while this was also going on, my hand was not only tingling but I couldn't move my hand. Once the lights stopped blinking, I was actually able to move my hand but I still have the tingling there. There was also a name that was picked up um, from one of the other investigators.
in the nurses station. Um, there was, it, it separated a couple rooms and we were going room to room. We decided to go into the nurses station and just do an EVP session in there. As we were in there we all turned off our lights and I was standing a couple three feet away from the wall and it felt like not somebody poking me in the back but it felt like I myself <clears throat> excuse me backed into the wall just the whole back side of me had pressure I instantly turned on my light and I'm still standing in the middle of the room there was nothing around me I was nowhere close to the wall something hit me in the nurses station when we were in there doing an EVP session I noticed a Actually, I didn't even notice it first. Someone else did. Um, I was started rocking. It was kind of like you would do if you were holding a newborn baby. I was kind of doing the rock back and forth with my body. And it was something that I couldn't control. When it was pointed out that I was doing it, I consciously made an effort to stand still and stop. And it was still something that I could not control. It was a very odd sensation. There was no pressure. There was no evilness to it or anything like that at the time. It was just a consistent, uncontrollable movement wasn't due to nerves, it wasn't due to anything else, and it was in that room only. I would get up and move, and if I would stop again, within 30 seconds it would start again. So that was a very, very odd experience for me. It was, felt almost like I was trying to soothe a newborn. Steve, myself, and other investigators was in the nurse's station. The owner's daughter was with us. We were all, some of us were standing, some of us were sitting on the floor and on the counters. Sherry just so happened to be standing next to me. She had on a vest that was kind of like a metallic vinyl type of thing. And as we're standing there, someone or something took their hand and ran it down the center of her back on her jacket. We all heard it. She thought that I did it, but soon realized that I had all the equipment in my hands and there was no way possible that I could do this. Another time that we were in the same nurse's station, Steve, myself, and other investigators were sitting there on the counters this time. Um, there was no flashlights on, no cameras on, no nothing. It was just total dark. Out of the middle of the table that was in front of us, there was an energy ball that came up from the center of the table and then just disappeared. We have no idea what it was. Everyone was looking around thinking that I had a camera on or a flashlight, and neither one was on. We still don't know what that was.